Uh, the Facebook network said, did you see the article in The Athletic saying we shouldn't be afraid to be favourites? Yeah, I commented on the article as well and I brought it up a little bit earlier on. There was one piece in the article that I, did, I didn't I did like. I'm going to read it out to you now in a second actually, but all, all in I thought it was a decent piece from Simon Hughes. I do enjoy Simon Hughes writing. Um, but there's again, there's a part in it about Jürgen that I'm just wondering, is it necessary for some of this stuff to be coming out? Because it feels like some people have been taking some shots at Jürgen recently. So one little paragraph from this uh, otherwise very good article from Simon Hughes said, Some of the problems Klopp left behind at Liverpool were less visible, with the relationship between football-related departments at the club nowhere near as healthy as evangelicals would lead you to believe. Slot doesn't really have to worry about that, however, because it's Richard Hughes' responsibility as sporting director to sort issues that, if solved, will give Liverpool a better chance of achieving success and in the, sh- in the long term sustaining it. So let me just read out the very important line in this again. Some of the problems Klopp left behind at Liverpool were less visible with the relationships between football-related departments at the club nowhere near as healthy as evangelicals would lead you to believe. So basically, people were lying. Now this is what winds me up, because we're always pointed out as being conspiracy theorists if we call this stuff out, or over the top, or looking to cause trouble. We're being lied to. And we have been lied to in the past. So again, I'm going to say, I will continue to speak my mind on bullshit that I think needs to be called out and all these manipulation of influential people to do the club's bidding and put out sometimes falsely positive stuff. It's just damaging. So it pisses me off because everybody could see that there were some issues. But of course, we're all lunatics and we're all being told, you know, you're making something out of it. Club sources say this club. They have to do what they have to do. They have to make it look like a rosy picture. But it was very clear that when Jürgen left, it felt like from the outside looking in, some relationships within that structure had been fractured. So many people left. So many people moving out of roles that they were promoted to and weren't in there for a long time. And stuff that genuinely should have concerned us, but we were all being told everything's great. And it wasn't. Now... Why is all this coming out now? I really don't know. I don't like the idea that people are trying to make Jürgen's um, situation, I don't know, worse now that he's gone. It just feels unnecessary. Even David Lynch defends FSG, didn't like that part. So let me just touch on this for a second because you're not the first person to say that in a, in a comment around David. So... I would say it's fair to say that I don't think David is as critical of the owners as I am. But there's a couple of things here. The reason I like speaking with David Lynch is I think it's important that we get different opinions. So I have my opinion on FSG and I'm not afraid to sit down and speak with somebody who has a differing opinion on FSG and hear what they have to say and maybe make my own mind up. But you never see it the other way around. You never see anybody who is critical of them being given an opportunity to question them or to interview somebody at the club about the ownership group. And this is what pisses me off. So with the Red Mist podcast, me and Lee are looking to, again, bring people together to have conversations in a civil way that might be emotive subjects like the Manchester City situation, which we're going to be debating on Monday. And with David Lynch, I very much love a differing viewpoint because... Maybe I'm wrong about certain things and David can help me with that. Or maybe I can point out some stuff to David that he perhaps wasn't thinking about in a certain way. So I don't feel like he's an FSG apologist. I just genuinely feel that he thinks if there's a problem to be had here with these with these contracts, he thinks that FSG have empowered um, Hughes and Edwards to sort it out and ultimately it would come down to their decisions. And I understand where he's coming from. We just look at it a little bit differently. I think... Ultimately, whoever's at the top of the pyramid is responsible. Um, and I li- and I- that's why I like David. We can have a respectful differing of opinions. And it doesn't get into a shouting match. And people can then make up their own mind what they think. I just hope that it, it shows people that, you know, these important conversations need to be had. They do need to be had. And we need to do it from a place where it isn't 
uh, trying to just undermine each other or shout each other down or belittle each other. Uh, Johnny said, completely agree, Craig. Just imagine what we could have achieved if they didn't or hadn't penny pinched right when we needed to go in for the kill. Yep. Um, so the argument back there, Johnny, is always, oh, you want us to be like Man City or Chelsea? No, we don't. It doesn't have to be that extreme. We just want a bit more. And that's it. I've said before, Liverpool fans, to me, a lot of them feel like we're almost browbeaten into accepting the crumbs off the table or into accepting whatever narrative the owners put out. And the narrative about everything was great behind the scenes with Jürgen, well, that's apparently bullshit, according to journalists who all of a sudden now are willing to write about these things but didn't have the backbone to speak up about it at the time. And then again, they call us the ones that are untrustworthy. Say what you want about me. I've been consistent, in my opinion. I haven't changed it. I haven't tried to stab somebody in the back after they've gone and belittled them. I've always said, even when Jürgen was saying he had a great relationship with the owners, I wasn't buying it. I wasn't buying it because I don't believe it. Because he wanted more. And he should have had more. Because he deserved more. So yeah. That's my uh, my take. Uh, G said, Craig, my argument is FSG don't know football. Edwards and Hughes do. And being given the chance to show the fans FSG will spend. But they want people who make good choices for the team. So let me push this back a little bit. We had Edwards in before. For quite a while. And we weren't really shown that the club could spend too much, were we? So, I love that you're optimistic. And I'm absolutely open-minded with regards to let's see what they do over the next few windows. 100%. We're, we're, we're now in a position of strength. We've started the season well. But we still need to sort out the contracts. And these contracts are just embarrassing at this point. That we're, we're still here. Uh, Vaughn said Klopp narrative smells fishy because if he was given that amount of power and was shafted by the owners to sign certain players uh, which he would have it doesn't make any sense a lot of these things haven't made sense to me mate like how is it like the Paul Joyce tweet the other day or the Paul Joyce piece the other day that said it's not that Liverpool don't have the resources it's that they want to allocate those resources accordingly and again, we're, we're back to talk about the wage bill, even though we freed up a load of money off the wage bill over the summer. Like, this is what I keep saying about us football fans often being treated like we're idiots. You can't save 18 million quid on a wage bill and then cry arse about having to pay a little bit more money to keep players who've been great servants to the football club. Um, it doesn't make any sense. But people are happy to spout this and put this shit out because... If, you know, they want to make sure that they, they get into the press conferences, they get into the stadium, they get access to interview the manager. And if it takes maybe towing the narrative on certain things, some people are willing to do that. I'm not. Uh, right, Hoarder, let me get your comment back up again. Said, I'm disappointed with Hughes and Edwards. So I still don't really know how to feel about the Hughes and Edwards situation because, you know, as I've said before and I've tried to be fair about, they inherited this this situation. They both came, one of them back into the club, but the other one is the sporting director in the summer. And this wasn't a problem of their making. Um, they have had some time to sort it out and I'm frustrated that they haven't. But overall, I still think, you know, this should have been started 18 months ago. As an example, uh, Erling Haaland right now has two and a half years to go on his current Manchester City contract. And they're already starting to talk about extending that um, with that new £100 million four-year deal that's been spoken about. Um, we shouldn't have left this this long. It is, it's just bad, bad legacy planning. It, I don't get it. I'll never understand it and it'll never have made sense to me because I think it's a mistake. 